So it's finally time to assemble the oil pump. So since the disassembly video, I've obviously cleaned it up a little. Um, got the top cover, the main body here. The rotor itself. We got the rotor blades. Obviously, some hardware, some springs, and a ball for the pressure relief valve. And of course, a gasket. This is going to be a very short video. It shouldn't take too much to put this thing together. But there is a measurement at the end we'll do. Um, there's a certain amount of clearance between this plate and this rotor that's required. And we'll need to measure that once we're done. The shop manual says to add gaskets to increase it or get a thinner gasket to decrease that measurement. I only have one gasket, so we'll see what happens here. I've previously cleaned it before I bagged it up in Ziploc baggies and it's been being stored waiting for me to assemble. So it shouldn't need much, but I'll wipe everything down anyway. Okay. First thing we'll do I want to go ahead and install the pressure relief valve. It can actually be installed after assembly, but I'll just do it now. Put some assembly lube on it. Just a little. Mainly to keep it from corroding while it's waiting. Okay, this spring is tapered. It has a smaller diameter set of coils at one end. That is the end that goes down towards the check ball. And this is your pin that would go through here and hold the spring in place. So we got to get the spring down to start with. Okay, so spring's in place at this point. But now comes the tricky part. There we go. So our pin here is in place. I'm not sure if that's focusing or not, but okay. So we want to assemble this rotor here. I'm going to put some assembly lube on this thing. It'll, of course, run a little dry at first. I will prime the pump before first start up. Prime the whole entire oiling system, actually. Just out of curiosity, let's see if there's any. Yeah, with this, with no gasket, you can't turn the rotor. So this rotor does sit up above the surface a little bit. Okay, so now we need to install our blades. I notice there is a 45 degree angle here on the corner. So it matters which way is which. In this particular one I can tell, so you have a small hole there, there's a wear pattern. 
in it. So this side is going to be up. But if I needed to look in a shop manual, it'll tell you also. Um, this edge with the 45 faces the direction of rotation. And that reminds me. Before I put this in, I should probably put a tad more grease on the side than I originally did. Okay. Right. The way this works is this is your suction. It's going to draw oil in. Oil is going to fill this gap. As it rotates, the gap's going to get larger. The volume of the gap gets larger, pulls oil in. Once the blade passes the opening, now it's compressing it, and it's actually pushing it out of this hole. There's another port over here. If you look at the cover, it comes out of this hole, into the cover, across this passageway, then out the center, into this center hole here. And inside of the center hole, there's the pressure relief valve that will relieve pressure, but also it forces the oil into the camshaft, and the camshaft is the main journal for the engine. But it also will pump oil out of this to go to the oil filter and the cylinder head. Okay, so next step is to install this cover. Because this is under pressure, I am going to actually put a little bit of sealant on this gasket. To do that, I need to make sure the gasket surface is good and clean. I just have some denatured alcohol on this rag. That dry a minute while that dries. I do want to make sure I will have some grease on this rotor when it goes together. Oops, went a little too far there. The sealant I'm going to use, something that goes on thin. In this case, it's some old copper spray gasket. For this application, the copper doesn't matter. But do a real thin coat. Hardly any. Just enough to make it a little tacky. Gasket's actually made a little larger than it needs to be. We'll see if that'll button down tight without any issues.
Yeah, I don't like the way that gasket sits. Hmm. Look in the gap and make sure it's not overhanging into the rotor area. It is not. Looks like the only port in it is clear. Well, I guess I'm going to go with it. I'll trim up the edge, trim out the little overhang inside the holes here, and I will probably pressure test this, figure out a way to pressure test it just to make sure. There's no torque, torque spec for these screws. If there was, I don't have a torque wrench small enough to uh, torque them to spec anyway, so. So we'll just make it tight. And it turns free. That's a good sign. A little bit of in play there. Okay. So we have a little bit of a setup here, <laughs> kind of rigged together with a vise and dial indicator. But this is going to be how we measure the gap that's between the rotor and this back housing. So this will have a certain amount of in-play. The specs in the book are 0 .001 to 003. And I would move this back and forth. Moved it a bit much there. Let me tighten it down. This is obviously not ideal, but for something like this, we're close enough. Looks like 004, 4007 inch here. So zero, zero, three is the max. If we have 0 .004 inch in play, only use one gasket instead of two. Well, I'm only using one gasket. So this gasket's apparently thicker than the factory gasket. In this case, it's close enough in my opinion. So we're gonna roll with it. I imagine this is a test that 90% of the people out there building these pumps don't necessarily do, as long as it all looks good and not worn. But there we go. So I'll get this thing cleaned up and painted. Trim out that, trim off the excess gasket since it wasn't quite the right size. The hole in there where the bolt goes through, I'll punch that piece of gasket out. But um, I guess I'll pressure test it too. Should work pretty good. All right.